and welcome to another episode of CMYK Play. In today's episode, we are going to be exploring amber. Each week in the series, we experiment creating colors using CMYK. C stands for cyan and magenta, Y yellow, and the K stands for black. I will be using stock mixtures, powder mixtures, and a combination of the two if necessary. Everything you need to know about what I'm doing, what dye I'm using, and in what form I'm using it, along with any other relevant information will be found in the description box below. These experiments are done using 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon fingering sock weight yarn. Please keep in mind that this is not the right or wrong way to do this. Uh, this is just how I am experimenting. There are many things that can change the outcomes of your experiments at home if you try this, such as if your water is more or less acidic than mine, if you use a different yarn base than I do, and if you swap out any of the dyes for a different dye. I encourage you to take this information and use it as a jumping off point in your own experiment. And with that being said, let's go to Pass Me in the Dye Studio and start experimenting to create the color amber. All right, today we are going to be going for an amber color. I'll put this up on the screen, the color that we're shooting for. And uh, I got various, uh, I got various degrees of answers about amber. Um, some suggested it's three parts to one part. Others suggested it's a lot less than that. So we are gonna start with four tablespoons of yellow. And today, today we're working with magenta, yellow, and possibly black. I'm not quite sure yet. Um, those of you have, who have been uh, watching my videos know that I'm not the biggest fan of yellow, <laughs> but I do like gold, so amber, the color amber is a, is a yellow that I can tolerate. So, in today's video we're going to work with the yellow, the magenta, possibly the black, and we're going to start with four tablespoons of yellow. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna we're gonna do increments of one teaspoon of magenta at a time until we get that nice warm semi-gold color so we're gonna start with one teaspoon of magenta and see what that looks like Right, to me this already looks pretty orange. Yeah, so that, that's pretty orange to me. Um, I do love the, the color, the shade of orange that happens when uh, yellow and the magenta touch each other. But I think, I'm gonna let this sit for a few minutes, but I think we're gonna need to add more yellow because it's just a little too red. So I'm gonna add one more tablespoon of yellow to our base concoction here and see what that gets us. Now I always like to keep the yellow away from the other colors because any little plop in the yellow will alter your yellow. <clears throat> All right, so that was our, our first mixture that is calming down a little bit. I want to add a little bit of water to this. It's pretty concentrated. So I want to add a little water to this. I'm going to put a little hot water also. Give a little mix ado. All right, this was this was our second dip. So I'm gonna let that set for a few minutes. We might be getting close. <clears throat> um, I am 
fully expecting that not every single time I'm gonna get <clears throat> the exact color that I'm going for but that is the fun of the process right learning so that is getting a little closer think to the color that we're going for it's still pretty red to me so we might need to add a little bit more yellow so yeah that's still pretty as you see as it travels down the paper towel it kind of lightens up and that that gives like a little bit more of a closer closer to what we're what it's going to look like on the yarn um, but that's still pretty orange to me so i'm going to add another tablespoon of yellow <clears throat> See when, when you are doing the research to try to come up with the like a base con like concoction for whatever color you're going for. The trouble with um, the CMY uh, K values is that it's not that is in relation to printers um, like Panatone. Um, when you print something out of your printer, it uses those values to kind of get the right color so the translation into dye is not a hundred percent it's not a hundred percent and uh, so that's the fun part is trying to I take those values that I find on the internet and I kind of translate them myself so it's not always going to be 100% perfect, and I know that. Still looking pretty orange red to me. All right, <clears throat> I think I wanna go with this first concoction and see if it actually turns up as red as I, I'm afraid that it might. Um, because we have three attempts here, so we're gonna do the first one for at six tablespoons of yellow and one teaspoon of magenta and uh, see what that actually looks like on the yarn and then we'll I'll make adjustments in the second and third based on what this looks like so we're gonna go over to the pot all right so now we're at the pot and as usual this is just plain water there's no citric acid in here yet I'm gonna let the heat it heat up a little bit before I put the citric acid in <clears throat> because with um, I want to get like a mostly solid color and uh, if the I want to get a mostly solid color and if the citric acid is in the water that means it's gonna strike fast and I want this to strike a little slower all these little experiments we are using my fuzzy fingering base which is uh, a traditional sock yarn 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Ooh, that's pretty. I might have inadvertently done it, folks. All right, I'm gonna turn the heat on. <clears throat> and I'm gonna sit here and wave this around for a little bit, move, move, give the, give it some motion so that, okay. So we are back. It is definitely a lot more orange, so I'm gonna cut way back on the amount of magenta, but I'm starting to feel the heat, so we're gonna add the citric acid in now. So I added two tablespoons of citric acid. I'm gonna stir it around. It's pretty, it's got pretty good coverage. So uh, I am going to bring you over to the mixing table and we are going to go for try number two of amber. So we're back at the mixing table and I'm going to start with, for try number two, I'm going to start with six tablespoons of yellow. <clears throat> and this time I'm going to go with a quarter teaspoon amount of magenta because I think that the I think that one teaspoon is just going to take way too much yellow to overpower it, so we're going to go quarter teaspoon. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
three, four, five, six. Find a quarter teaspoon here. Here we go. So now we're gonna just do a quarter teaspoon of the magenta. Let's see how that goes. I'm gonna add a little bit of hot water in. Magenta is it's a really strong color. All right, let's see what that looks like. There we go. That looks closer, right? Gonna let this rest for a second. It's definitely way less red. Definitely close to a more golden color. I don't know, guys. <laughs> I feel like that might be our second attempt there. It's definitely way less red <clears throat> than our previous. You know, the one we have in the pot now is very, very orange. I still see a little bit of red. So I'm gonna add in one more tablespoon of yellow to this attempt. Because it's very, very, like I said, this magenta is very, very powerful color. So we added one more tablespoon of the yellow. Let's see where that's at. Probably gonna have to mix more yellow. Let's see here. I want to add another tablespoon of yellow because that just still looks pretty red to me. Definitely less red. So we're at nine tablespoons of yellow and a quarter teaspoon of magenta. All right, I think I'm ready to see what this looks like. It's just plain water. <clears throat> we're gonna give it a little stir. The heat is already turned on. But as I learned from another dyer, you never judge your yarn while it's wet. All right, the water is starting to have some heat to it. So, as you can see, it's quite a lovely shade. That's a shade of yellow I can live with. <laughs> so I add a second, because this is the second attempt, I add a second <clears throat> a zip tie to the yarn until I can get it dried and labeled. We're gonna add one, two, and then we're gonna mix it up. <clears throat> so I will be back with you in a few moments at the mixing table for try number three. All right, we're back at the mixing table. <clears throat> on this attempt I think I'm going to try adding small amounts of black to kind of brown it up and we'll see if we can get like a like a golden amber like a brown amber so I am going to start with nine tablespoons of yellow one quarter teaspoon of magenta we have to mix up some more of the yellow see what we can get here Yeah, 
I'm gonna have to mix up more of the yellow. back with a brand new batch of yellow we're gonna do nine teaspoon tablespoons of yellow oops spilled a little three four five six seven eight nine and we're going to do one quarter teaspoon of the magenta right. now try to find my eighth of a teaspoon Where's my eighth? Oh, there it is. And we're going to do an eighth of a teaspoon of black. that I like that so what was that that was nine tablespoons of yellow quarter teaspoon of magenta one eighth of a teaspoon of black I really like that this is close to what we're gonna get as it spreads out it breaks a little bit I like that I really like <clears throat> oh yeah, Mama likes that. Oh guys, I'm really digging that. That color, that darker shade there. I don't think I want to add any more. I think that is a sufficient amount of brown. Because if I add any more, it's going to get darker and it's going to kind of take it away from that golden color that we're looking for so I'm going to bring you over to the pots in a second all right so we're here at the pot I'm going to put this lovely golden honey color in give her a little mix to do sorry about that we had a yarn tangle So I, like the others, I'm going to sit here and move this around to get some good coverage. 
and I will be back with you once it's warmed up a little bit. All right, so it's starting to get a little bit of heat in there. So we're gonna add our two tablespoons of citric acid. definitely more of a mustard I think which I don't hate not quite amber brown but you know you can't win them all I think I I uh, that try to may have been the closest but I don't hate this although I would say that that's more honey mustard <clears throat> so I'm gonna run these and clear them and then wash and dry them and I will show you what we ended up with. Okay, welcome back. Um, as you can see from this experiment, one slight change to our dye mixtures made a very different outcome. So here's attempt one, which was six tablespoons of yellow and a quarter teaspoon of magenta, which made this very I'm going to call this tangerine. It is a very fun color, but not quite amber. Attempt number two, which I, I feel is the closest. That was nine tablespoons of yellow and a quarter tablespoon of magenta. This, this is the closest to the amber color and it's quite lovely. And then attempt number three was nine tablespoons of yellow, a quarter teaspoon of magenta, and an eighth of a teaspoon of black, which basically created like a honey mustard almost. Which I'm down with, I like this, honey mustard. So, if you guys have been following uh, along in any of my other videos that I've done, you, you'll probably have heard me mention the fact that I am not a fan of yellow. But these three colors, like I'm more into like the golden autumn colors. Um, so these are like my speed. It's one, two, and three. These, these three colors are my speed. And I'm very happy with all three of them. Like I said, number two, I think, is the closest. Uh, if you are seeing this right now, these are available to purchase on my website. If you want more of a quantity, if you aren't into experimenting with dyeing on your own, if you want more of one of these colors, you can purchase to your heart's desire. <laughs> and if you want it on a different base, uh, there's a contact form on my website that you can use to reach out to me and we can make that happen. So. Thank you for joining me for episode two. This was a lot of fun. I really like, this is a very good example of how slight changes to what you add to the base color really just, you get a really wildly different color. <laughs> um, so thank you for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video and share it with all your peoples. And I will see you next week. We will be exploring cranberry, super fun. So I will see you then. And until then, take care. Bye.